A queen should always remain unbothered and regal. Never show a bitch that she got you sweating. Let's get to it, shall we? Welcome back to the channel everybody i'm lady nika and with this week's episode of the real households of atlanta this is season eight episode 14 entitled peaches of the caribbean hmm. all right y'all now we on that bus child we on that damn bus we headed out there to kingston to meet peter auntie faye everybody asking where king is now Cynthia say somebody told Kenya that they weren't that she said that they weren't friends and as a result Kenya's not coming. She also said that Kenya stormed off, okay? Now Cherie knowing that she the one that spoke, she said, uh I didn't tell her that like that. I told her what you said, honey, which is that y'all were working on y'all relationship, okay? So, I'm assuming that Cherie is basically going to be that, that one that bring the drama because, or at least that one that make a bitch say what she said because normally, why else would she be doing this? She ain't got no beef with these other ladies. They friends, but... As with every season, we got to have somebody to bring the noise and shit. And for a change, I'm glad it ain't Kenya all the time. Although, Kenya, you did a lot. We will be talking about that, okay? She, she, she restood in her shit and she told, King, told Cynthia what she had said, okay? Now, Cynthia said they weren't besties. And, and I'm cool with that. I, I really, I'm, I don't have no problem with Cynthia saying that they not besties because, for one, y'all hoes is over 40 years old. You bet not have no fucking, I bitch, I wish I would at 43 be running around here talking about a whole my motherfucking best friend. But I have close friends. And I kind of feel like Cynthia, she, she kind of shitted on, uh, Kenya, because let's go back to the Rocky Boat Horror Review, okay? Let's go back to that. When when we was introduced to some called the Stonefoot Bailey, some called the Jet Lee Bailey, I called her Kick a Bitch by Time Bailey. That's what I called her, okay? Now, remember when she had that nasty fallout with Portia where she kicked Portia in her overused vagina area, and Candy and them were saying that. Since Kenya was uh, Cynthia's bestie, which is why Cynthia went to talk to Kenya, because let's go back in time. Let's remember that Kenya was about to go to the captain and tell him that this bitch got to go. I got one, possibly two, that need to get off my boat, okay? Now, if, if Cynthia and Kenya wasn't close friends at that time, because we're not going to use the best friend term, because we all grown, and I feel like only teenagers and folks in their 20s still run around talking about their best friends. Now, you may have a best friend, but at 40 years old and older, bitches, you really run around here calling them best friends? I mean, like, for real, though, are you really doing that? I hope not. I hope you just call them your good Judy or your good, good girlfriend, you know. Something like that, other than best friend shit, bitch. Lonnie be me, Lonnie love, whatever his name. Good, good girlfriend on that motherfucking ass is what you can call me. Don't call me your best friend, because shit, that's just a little bit too much. Now, her and Cynthia, at, at, at the Rocky Boat Horror Review, go back. I, I It's up on my uh, playlist. It's down there. Y'all hear me talk about it. Candy and them said that they was best friends. If Cynthia felt like they wasn't in a best friend or headed in that direction, why didn't she refute that then? Okay. Now, let's go back even further to a review I did where Cynthia was launching her eyewear line when she came down there serving us body yada yada for days and shit was it not kenya who was already pissed off and had had words with peter because peter was uh film touching some hoe up on her thoke area running his fingers down to her right breast area and because of that kenya felt some kind of way because cynthia was her good good girlfriend correct me if i'm wrong 
Hmm. Now, I don't know why she kind of backpedaled on saying that Cynthia, uh, that, that, you know, telling, Ki well, I don't know why she backpedaled on telling Nene the nature of their relationship. Maybe she felt like if I tell Nene this, then Nene going to be tripping and then we going to be back in a bad place. But see, I wouldn't have gave a fuck. I'm going to call it like I see it. If I'm your home girl, yo, yo, you know, we, we, we brewskis or whatever, bitch, we dead regardless. I don't give a damn if a hope from the past do show up, but you know, everybody do things differently. Now, y'all already know where the bitch was going when she tried to downplay her relationship with Kenya. Now, my love things I already know, but for my fans who love to, you know, hate hate me and still too mesmerized by these gaps to not watch me, y'all know where I'm going with this, right? Y'all y'all get where I'm going with this cuz I know the love things y'all already on tech. Y'all 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 know what type we right here. We right here. But, you know, it, it, I have to clarify things for the people that don't really too much. You know, them silent fans, the ones that love to watch me all the time and so mesmerized by these gaps that's so unappealing that they can't turn off my channel. Y'all the ones I'm trying to clarify where I'm going with this head, okay? Okay. Now, Cynthia's nine her feelings because all of this thing came up. You know, and she got to explain her relationship or her friendship now with Nene and her friendship with Kenya. And I guess in that moment, Cynthia got emotional. See, that, that's the problem I always had with Cynthia. You can't, girl, you need to, first of all, you long as you done been out here in this public eye, you should know how to speak your mind. You should know how to formulate your thoughts without having to backpedal or try not to hurt nobody's feelings. You should know how to speak by now, okay? But apparently she don't. And Nene was sitting over there watching her get all upset, and I guess somewhere inside of Nene, there really is a heart, because Nene told her, girl, don't worry about it. When we get back, I'm gonna I'm go talk to Kenya and try to get this his shit together, you know. I'm gonna talk to Kenya for you. Okay, let me add Kenya didn't storm off and not come on this trip to Kingston. Let's just be clear. The reason why Kenya did not come to the trip to Kingston is because when she was sitting in that room talking to Cynthia about Cynthia downplaying their relationship, Cynthia asked that woman, is that uh, what she done? Because Peter was texting her and she needed to go. And Kenya got in her feelings like, well, bitch, if you ain't got a few minutes to have a conversation with a bitch, fuck you. So she opted to not go and go to the spa with her dick instead, which I would have went with the man regardless if we was on good terms or not. Because trust and believe, I, I already done found out I'm not going to be a part of the, of the commercial situation. So, bitch, I'm going to go spend some of these Jamaican uh, moments with my man. It, it, I ain't mad at her, child. I ain't mad at her. And, and while they was on that damn uh, bus, child, we looked over there and seen Greg and fell out, child. He was on a Geritol now. Child, I guess he say, Nene, look, girl, if you're going to want some of this good old dick, some of this old, uh, you know, Geritol and water, then you're going to have to motherfucking let me get my rest in. So he was resting, child. He was resting. Okay. They get there and they meet up with Auntie Faye, okay? And... Auntie say she ain't never she ain't seen Peter in 18 years. Peter, aka Elvis, we found out that that said motherfucker's name. Now where we get Peter from, I don't care. I don't know. Child, y'all know how it is in Hollywood. I mean, you know, they always changing their names and shit. So we we gonna assume that that's what the fuck happened. Well. We also found out that the aunts don't, they must don't have no TV, no internet. They must don't have nothing because they didn't even know who Cynthia was. They could not readily uh, recognize her. Child, they had went to Phaedra, then they went to Mallory because Mallory is on the trip too. You know, they didn't know. But anyway, once they got all this shit done, child, they took them over there and they had a seafood fest. When I tell you, yes, God, honey, that's the kind of shit I plan on having going on with my, you know, my good, good girlfriends and boyfriends when we go down there to the Vegas area, honey. I want to go down there and have us a spread like that. So they had their seafood fest and it was nice, child. It was real, real nice, okay? They leave the dinner, they return to the resort, and the men go with the men, and the women go with the women. But Nene, being a woman of her word, child just saying it made me get a hot flash. 
Now, a woman of her word. Nene go to talk to fucking Kenya, okay? Now, Kenya thinking to knock at the door is her chicken sandwich that she didn't order from fucking, uh, from down there at the room service. But it's Nene motherfucking ass. And Nene coming there trying to tell her, like, look, Cynthia love you. She says she love you. I realize y'all are friends. I ain't got no problem with that. Hell, in fact, I want to be friends, too. So, see, you know, Nene, Nene knows she need to get in where she fit in because she, she stepped down from her chariot that's why she ain't the queen around there no more but she over there trying to get in where she fit in so she telling cynthia i mean telling kenya you know let's just be cool you know won't you come on down here and have a couple of drinks with us and stuff and after kenya had heard what uh cynthia had said at the mouth of nene she decides she gonna go on on down there well when she get down there they do have a conversation her and uh cynthia now i feel like maybe they should have had that in private but they didn't so you know basically Cynthia told her she love her and she respect her and they are close friends but they are not best friends and I guess at this point god damn it can you let the shit go I mean girl I'm team twirl all day long but you did a whole lot on this episode that get really just makes me know that sometimes you need to have the bus pulled over and get you together so they did that okay now let me see where I'm with this here. Kenya told Cynthia she was hurting. Cynthia said she, you know, she loved Kenya. They friends. They, you know, they are close friends. She put that out there that they close friends. So we got that together. Now, from what I seen. Okay. Now, the conversation some kind of way switched over to Kim's husband, Chris, right? And immediately, Kenya began to do something I don't like. Now, see, I told y'all. I'm team twirl, but any I call it like I see it. You know what I'm saying? For the most part, Kenya is what I like, so that's the reason why I go up for her and I ride on the team twirl bus with them, okay? But when she wrong, she wrong. And I had a problem with this part of the episode because... Kenya was like, you know, saying that, oh boy, he's known as a Broadway singer and a dancer, but she also said it's been a rumor around Hollywood for quite some time that the man is, you know, gay. He got a little toot in his fruit, okay? He got a little loop in his fruit, making him a fruit loop, okay? That's what she was saying, and I wasn't here for that because we don't, for one, we don't spread false rumors. You don't know this to be true about that man, Kenya. And I feel like in that moment, you was dead ass wrong. Now, I know some girl gossip and stuff. You do that kind of stuff. But what we don't do is we don't speculate on folks' sexuality, especially considering you know firsthand what it's like to be at the butt of someone's speculation and false rumors being spread around behind you so i wasn't here for kenya when she led the crusade on all of that now all the other ladies did join in with the exception of sheree and cynthia they was in their fucking feelings i guess cynthia say bitch i ain't said nothing else because every time i open my motherfucking mouth i gotta go through it and sheree was sitting over there like she really wasn't here for the conversation which i can understand that you don't pass no rumors out. i'm sure that whatever the fuck kim her husband is she know by now and she apparently all right with it okay yes to us the viewing audience he do look like he a tambourine player but we don't know that he a tambourine player or not and if he is so what his wife all right with it she let him play the motherfucker so i me too bitch i don't give a damn okay now Let's go over to the men's section. And you got Greg, Peter, and Matt, okay? And right off the bat, it seemed like Greg and Peter was kind of taunting that boy. Now, y'all just met him. Clearly, we know Matt is younger, okay? He, I, I, I didn't like how that shit went because I myself am going through, you know what I'm saying, one of them type of situations. It... it I didn't get why they kept asking him about his age, and he already feeling some kind of way because he done seen all the negative negativity the women showed with Kenya, so he don't know what he walking into. He tell them, you don't don't play, y'all know how old I am. Well, they say they don't, and so he say he 28 years old. Greg was like, I got some shoes older than you. I imagine you probably do, child. I mean, I know you well past half a hundred, so I'm sure you do. But Peter, 
seemed like he had a problem with the boy. Like him being 28 was a problem. Bitch, are you not older than Cynthia? See, I don't like that shit because I'm over here going through the young man. Older woman. I had a little Millie Jackson moment just then. But what difference does it make? You know what I'm saying? But Peter act like he had a problem with the boy being the age that he are, you know, that he is. And um, I wasn't here for that. All Greg said was he had shoes older than him. But Peter felt like he wanted to make the boy uncomfortable. And, and, and he kind of had an attitude toward him. And I didn't understand what that attitude and shit was all about, Peter. Because you older than Cynthia with your uncle being rice-making ass, bitch. In this episode, you pissed me off, Patrick. You went too goddamn far. Because that boy got mad. That boy got up and he walked off. And he told you if he had a problem with his age or anything that y'all had a conversation about, come on outside because where well, it ain't nothing but an opportunity, Ed. And if you got a problem, bring it. Of course, Peter didn't come because Peter know goddamn well if he would have touched around that goddamn door. Talking about going out there behind that big bulky ass man, he would have got his motherfucking ass stomped the fuck out. But he walked on off and of course Peter left him with, go on, walk off like your woman. See if he turned around and fucked you up for that, people would have been saying that Matt was wrong. But I don't feel like Matt would have been wrong if he'd have choked your motherfucking ass out. And in a way, I sort of kind of wanted him to whoop your motherfucking ass because you can't come at everybody like that. That man don't know y'all like that. And even if y'all were just playing, it's a, when you see a person that ain't comfortable with what you're doing, then you're supposed to stop like a, 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 on a, like a person, like an adult with common sense. You knew that boy didn't like this shit, but you wanted to get cute. I wish he would have whooped your motherfucking ass. Bitch, please. He would have stayed on the poster. Cause everybody ain't scared of that Rastafarian bullshit. I know I fucking ain't. Shit. Say it on posted, baby. You know them Jamaicans, they say they cut your head off and send it to you. But shit, you'd have pissed that boy off. He'd have, he'd have rocked your ass to sleep. He could have sent you to your parents over there in Kingston, you know, for little or nothing, honey. Because y'all already on the damn island. That's all I'm saying. Sitting up there acting like it's a problem about that boy being young and shit. Child, you, I, Peter... You do too much. In that in, in that scene, you did too much with your old bitch-made ass. That waist trainer that your ass be wearing. And hell yeah, that's the fucking waist trainer. Come out, sister manager be wearing one. When he take off his uh top coat of the uniform, he got his little black or white tee on as per my fucking uh, dress code. You could tell he got one. He got the kind that you step in. Child, you could see it up underneath that. You could see that little line and shit from that damn waist trainer. Hell, I got two or three of them on it around me too you know sometimes but bitch i'll be on the treadmill trying to work that shit out now peter is you a lazy bitch or is you just trying to pull one up you trying to goop the kids is you gooping the kids is what i wants to know anyway child i i, I just smell straight hate peter was hating on that boy in that moment now let's go to the mercer and now it's the day of the mercer and kim is there with her assistant I thought she ain't work with nobody, but apparently she worked with other people as long as it ain't Kenya. But uh, she there, she in full director mode. The weather is threatening to do something bad, but you know we push through everybody and everybody that that is to include the cast. And y'all, did y'all peep Bob? Bob is giving me my life on this damn on this season. Child, after how bad we hated Bob back in the that gap, I am enjoying seeing a lighter side, funny side of Bob. But, yeah, all of them going to be in the damn thing, child. Now, Phaedra was being playful trying to welcome uh, Matt in, okay? Because Kenya and Matt did show up to support, right? Um, of course, you know, after how Greg and Peter made him feel, he kind of uncomfortable, but he pleasant. You know what I'm saying? Kenya bothered by it. And my thing is, again, y'all might say, you know, uh, girl, why are you going in on the toilet tonight? Because the toilet was wrong. Girl, you flirted with that woman husband unrelentlessly in Anguilla. Turnabout is fair play, Kenya. The man ain't going to leave you just like Apollo didn't leave Phaedra. But, you know, she just being friendly. And I ain't take no harm in the what Phaedra's saying because we all know Phaedra horny as hell. Apollo been gone for a while, honey. And she got to watch what she do because you don't know how many of the goons might be watching that bitch. And then we know the FBI is. So, 
You know, she just was being playful with him, trying to warm him up and shit. So I wasn't here for Kenya getting pissed off like she did, talking about, um, is she flirting with her man? You goddamn right she flirting with him a little bit, playful flirting, unlike that flat-out disrespect that you showed her, asking her about having a threesome with her fucking man back in Anguilla days. So, see, turnabout is fair play. I can't get mad at uh, Phaedra about what she did unless I go in on your motherfucking ass for what you did back in the Anguilla day, okay? Now, some kind of way this call she goes around and Kenya name not on it. Now, Kenya, last week, did you not just tell that woman you ain't want no part? So you told her that and you told Kim. So it was no mishap that your name wasn't on there. You were only supposed to be there to support Cynthia once y'all made friends again. But prior to probably when this was made up, you were you had already said you wasn't gonna be a part of the shit. You ain't wanna be in front of the camera, in the back of the camera, you don't wanna be on the side of the camera, you don't wanna be on the camera, period, okay? So don't get no attitude because your name not on this shit. And why are we critiquing this shit uh for flaws? It ain't got nothing to do with you. Win, lose, or draw. This ain't your business no more. You here as a supporting castmate for Cynthia. Well, Kenya, once again, you got in your fucking feelings, and you and your man want to go out there on the banana boat out into the elements. So you see it look like it's about to rain. Everybody looking at you wondering, I thought you was supposed to be here to support your bestie. Why you ain't here? Why you not paying her no mind? But, of course, Kenya was in her fucking feelings again. Child. Now, I'm team twirl, but... <sighs> Girl, I'm team 12, but I ain't got no problem getting you together when you wrong. You showed your ass in this episode, and I, that was not a good look. And as a member of team 12, I'm going to need you to get it to and gather, bitch. Get it to and gather. Okay, it's not big of a, it's not that big of an, uh, a deal. Why you got an attitude, I don't know. Well, while y'all was out there on that paddle boat, Matt tell her about what went down with Peter and Greg. And he admit that he went a little too far, which I can let that ride. He told her that he had threatened to get physical and stuff. And Kenya did reprimand him, tell him, no, nah, I don't want you fighting nobody. But he also realized he was wrong. So when it's a, man, it's a situation like that, I can respect that, okay? He know how... Greg and Peter name was really coming for him and, and how they were, he was coming to him. So he made a mistake and he said that and I, and he going to make it right. Okay, so we're not going to worry about that there. Fairly make it right with Greg because Peter or sour bitch, you never know. He might be trying to, you know, act a damn fool because he feel like his peach threatened. Okay, now all of us comes to fuck Portia because she done been hitting him up. And she fake like they sleeping in, to se in separate quarters. Girl, we not fools. And I don't know why you feel like you got to lie for the camera. Child, my mama told me whatever you do, be the best that if you a hoe, be the best hoe that there is. If you, it could be a situation where y'all just wants to get together and, and, and bang each other's, you know, breaks off each other. If that's what it is, that's what it is. You single. You ain't got no kids, girl. We don't give a fuck. Stop trying to put on for the camera. Stop putting on for the camera. Okay. So now at the Marshall done been done. And uh, it's a rap party. Now when we get to the rap party, we notice Peter mean mug and Matt. And I don't know why. You know what I'm saying? Peter still seems, still seems to have a problem with Matt. But Matt is a, a man who thinks on a higher level than Peter. Got his own motherfucking shit. He's solidified in his own way. He may not be solidified in the way that we, the viewing artists, may feel like he should be. But he done did his shit. He got five years military experience. He got his own business. And he doing his own shit without using his wife or some woman. He doing it on his own. So that makes him ten times the man in my mind than Peter is uh, in the first fucking place. So the boy go over there with a drink and they, you know, that's a peace offering. And as me and supposed to, I guess Peter says, shit, this ain't the time for me to be acting like I'm trying to get my peace. So I'm going to go on, on, on and accept it. So they move on from there. Now the girls, they over there talking about Chris. See, Kristen had to leave, y'all. Kristen had to leave. He had some work to do. So he done live. But the girls over there talking about they hate that he wasn't there and that he's a great guy and, you know, yada, yada, yada. And Cherise sitting back looking crazy like, really? So it's at that moment Cherie decides that she's going to spill tea to Kim and tell Kim that those ladies was just calling your husband a Fruit Loop, a tambourine player. They were saying he was sweet. They said your husband is what we call suspect. 
Now, you know that ain't going to be nothing but a bunch of motherfucking bullshit. That ain't going to be nothing but a bunch of motherfucking bullshit. Because no woman is going to allow you to sit there and tear tie- down her man or make speculations about her man. But I guess, like I said, Cherie got to do what she got to do to solidify her peace for next season. And she also got to do, in doing that, she got to do what these damn producers telling her to do. Because under normal circumstances, she wouldn't have told this shit. That would have just been some harmless girl talk, whether she liked it or not. She wouldn't have came out and told her. But that's what she did. And we got a to be continued. So next week, I guess we're going to see him do the fool about her man, which I don't I, I can understand in a way why she would do it. Because they're all smiling in her face and stabbing her in her back. But hell, it look like y'all all do that to each other. Child, I don't know. But that's all I got for you. That's it. That's all. In the meantime, in between time, please like, comment, subscribe. Remember, they hate you because they ain't you. And peace.